Hello and welcome to this mini lesson from inside the PE portal. Today we are going to be looking at hydration and dehydration. So we can start over on this side with hydration. First of all, what is it? Well, it's the consumption of water, or we should say it's the adequate consumption of water. Adequate consumption of water. So that our body complete or can complete its daily functions and bodily functions without any issues. How do we achieve this? Well, it's recommended that people consume anywhere between 2.5 to 3.5 litres per day, according to their size, their body mass, and their daily activity. Obviously, the bigger you are and the more active you are, then the more you should drink. The smaller you are and the less active you are, the less you should drink. And this doesn't necessarily have to be water from a water bottle or a tap. This can be sourced from fruit or vegetables, which are high in water, or perhaps from other dietary intakes, such as juices or squashes or yogurts or other foods as well. But two and a half to three and a half liters of water consumption per day. Why? Well, because our body is made up between 60 and 70% by water. So it's very important to keep on top of our water content. So where does it go? Why do we actually need to consume water on a daily basis? Well, it serves a very important, well, sorry, it serves many important roles. The first is it makes up our cells. A lot of our cell space is actually water-based. So it's the site for chemical reactions to actually take place. If we start to dehydrate and lose water, and our cells lose water, then there's less space and less medium in which the chemical reactions and processes can actually take place. It forms a large part of our blood volume. So a lot of our blood is actually water-based. Now the blood also has red blood cells, white blood cells. It carries blood sugar, glucose, our hemoglobin. It carries oxygen, CO2, lactic acid. It carries all of these different things. And if we get less blood, that is not a good thing. It also helps us excrete toxins. So if I put excretion, so in the form of urine, when we pass urine, within that there's toxins that we don't want to be keeping inside of our body. And if we haven't got enough water to complete urination, then those toxins are going to stay inside of our body. And the last one is it helps us thermo, what is the T, regulate. It helps us thermo regulate. And I'm going to move on to that very shortly. So, moving on to dehydration. What can happen if we don't get adequate hydration? Well, it's defined as it's defined as an excessive loss or excess loss of water of H2O to the extent that it impairs bodily function. Now this could be as little as a negative 2% drop in our water mass. So excessive loss of H2O that impairs bodily functions. But what are some of those functions? What are some things that go wrong? We'll cover those in a second. I'm now going to jump back to what this word thermoregulation means. Because by understanding what thermoregulation means and what role water plays, we'll then start to understand the issues that dehydration pose. So, we know that it makes up cells, we know that it makes up blood volume, we know that we can excrete toxins with it, and we know that we can thermoregulate with it. But how can we thermoregulate? Well, all the time we are losing water through water vapor, through urine, and through sweat. Now this one here, sweat, is our thermoregulation. Heat that we generate from cellular metabolism, i.e. breaking food stuff down in our cells and converting it into energy, that releases heat. As our muscles 
contract and our joints articulate and move. It generates friction. It generates heat. And that passes into our surrounding tissue. And we don't want to overheat. Therefore, water is passed through the hot areas to the surface of our skin, and then we lose it through water droplets. So we can start to regulate our temperature. We can regulate our temperature. And if we can do that, that keeps our cells functioning correctly. It keeps the chemical reactions happening correctly. But you might be thinking now, what if we sweat too much? What if we are very hot because of the environment that we're in, which is what we're going to talk about in a moment, and we excessively lose water, and we don't supplement ourselves with two and a half to three and a half litres of water a day, suddenly hydration turns into dehydration. So what are some of the causes of dehydration? Well, it's too much sweating. So excessive water loss and inadequate consumption. So low consumption, let's put consume, and high loss. So high water loss through the process of sweating, water vapour because we're breathing heavily when we exercise, and perhaps we've taken diuretics such as caffeine, which are causing us to urinate more. And if our consumption stays low, perhaps towards the two and a half or lower, or we don't increase it when we start to exercise, we'll start to see a drop in our water level, perhaps to the levels of minus two, signalling dehydration. So what are some of the impacts? Well, now we need to look at what the water actually does in our body. Let's take blood volume. With less blood volume, because the water loss has got to a high level, our blood's going to become more viscous. Blood thickens. And because the blood thickens, it's going to flow slower. Our heart rate is going to have to increase to make up for this shortfall. So the flow is going to be slower, the blood is going to be thicker, the heart rate is going to have to increase, blood pressure is going to increase because we're not able to get as much blood through the vessel because there's less of it because it's thicker and it's moving slower. So if we still want to satisfy energy demands and oxygen demands around the body, we're going to have to increase or maintain our cardiac output by increasing heart rate and increasing the blood pressure along with it. What are some other issues with dehydration? Well, if water is being drawn from the blood, it's going to be drawn from everywhere else. It's going to be drawn from our cells. And if the cells are in our muscle, then we're not going to be able to contract properly, which is going to come out in the form of cramps. It's going to come out in the form of fatigue. We're going to have less energy production because our cells aren't functioning properly. Now, if we're starting to lose water to the point of our blood thickening and our muscles are starting to cramp, we're definitely not going to voluntarily excrete the water that we've still got. So we might temporarily pause the production of urine and the toxins are going to stay in our body. Toxins remain. So we've got toxins hanging around in our body. We're not able to produce as much energy for movement. We're starting to fatigue as a result. Our muscles are starting to cramp because the cells haven't got the right amount of fluids in for the chemical reactions to take place. We've lost micronutrients in the sweat. Micro ends. I'm just going to cross that out. We're losing our micronutrients because they're dissolved in the water that we're losing a sweat. And on top of all of that, we've already taken water from the blood. We're having to postpone urination. The next place that we start to use water from is inside our brain. So brain fog might start to set in. So we might be dizzy. 
We might be thinking slower, making poorer decisions, all because we haven't consumed enough water and we've lost too much. And we've had this excessive loss of water which is now impairing bodily functions. Why? Because we didn't consume between two and a half and three and a half litres of water, which meant that we no longer sat in this 60 to 70% bracket, we experienced this 2% drop, which meant all of its uses suddenly became unhinged. Our blood volume dropped, we could no longer thermoregulate properly, we no longer excreted toxins, our cells were no longer to work correctly and produce energy and contract properly. And that is why hydration is very important. So I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.